This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome viewers to thinktechhawaii.com. My show is The Will of the People, and I am your host, Martha E. Randolph. Today, my guest is Michael Titterton, and our show's title is Let There Be Music. This is a story of the bankruptcy and recovery of the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra and where it stands today. My guest, Michael, was a former president and general manager of Hawaii Public Radio and is currently president of the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra since October 2016. During his 18 years with Hawaii Public Radio, he transformed the underappreciated network into a nationally recognized nonprofit organization honored for its achievements in news programming, fundraising, and fiscal responsibility. I have no doubt that he has been making a significant difference in the orchestra's financial stability and expanded support uh, from the community. But he's going to be telling us about that right now. So, Michael, first of all, welcome, and thank you for being my guest today. Mm, thank you. All right. I would like to start with a brief history of the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra, its original funding and maybe budget, the bankruptcy, the recovery, and where it stands today in that situation. Okay. We have, um, how long? How many hours do we have? No, let's keep it <laughs> short and sweet okay. because there are articles that people can always Google yeah, to get some information. Yeah, I, but let's give them the facts. It's, the been, it's been a long history, a yeah. long and colorful history. Uh, as you might know, uh, we're talking about here not one orchestra but two, mm. the Honolulu Symphony Society as it originally was, as it was until fairly recently, um, had a history of over 100 years. It was the oldest. Uh, symphony Orchestra uh, west of the Mississippi, I think, uh, was, was the claim, and it's largely accurate. And it was in continued operation, um, uh, serving the city of Honolulu uh, from 1903, I think, up until, oh. up until uh, uh, the demise the, in 2008. 2008, which mm -hmm. I believe was caused in no small part by an extended run of the Lion King at the Blaisdell, which Personally, I adore the show, but I was sorry to realize that it was so inhibiting to the orchestra. That was that wasn't the sole cause, but it was. Uh, uh, it would be an understatement to say it didn't help. I mean, it did a lot of damage. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, the orchestra um, had had uh, feasts and famines over the, over the years. It had uh, very good years and it had very bad years, as orchestras all over the place do. Oh. Uh, the Honolulu Symphony Society. Uh, in more recent years, during during this century, uh, had um, had hit a sort of a peak, and then, for a number of reasons, uh, not the least of which were changing fashions, national economy, or all, all that sort of thing that everybody yeah was, the fiscal collapse yeah of there course involved. didn't help at all, and uh, and so the Lion King debacle came at about the wrong time right. and uh, just knocked the, the stuffing out of, out of a very important season at a very critical time for the symphony. Make a long story over, the, um, uh, the symphony went into chapter 11 um, and then uh, couldn't be brought out again and uh, went into receivership and ceased to be. Um, and that was very, very sad for everyone, mm. especially those of us here who uh, happen to love classical music, Absolutely. Uh, appreciate the value of uh, not just good music for its own sake, but its catalytic effect on the, on the community I as a whole. I don't think many people realize how important the orchestra has been to other musical outlets here in Hawaii. The educators at the universities, uh, various quartets, uh, the opera mm -hmm, of and course. chamber symphony, at you can't have a chorus doing a pretty good choral performance without some music. So people probably didn't realize how important it well, was to it, the infrastructure. Th so that was a bit of a wake-up call, really. It sure was, yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, you mentioned music education. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's not been the best period uh, for education in schools. In fact, it's practically disappeared. And Absolutely. so um, the teachers who are inspiring the young, even introducing them to the idea of, of, uh, of good music uh, has fallen pretty much entirely on the uh, folks who work for the uh, for the symphony orchestra in any in most communities mm. but especially here where 
you know, we're you know, in the middle of nowhere, yada, 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 all the, all the um, Hawaiian difficulties and challenges that we face. Um, and uh, when the orchestra went away, all those people didn't go away, but they gradually began to trickle away. And it be quickly became apparent that um, it was a terrible thing to lose the structure of the orchestra, but month by month we were losing these highly skilled, irreplaceable, um, talented, young, most, for the most part, musicians. They were, you know, you got to go somewhere else to find a job. And if you uh, are an artist, you must have your craft. Of course. I mean, sometimes even if you perform for nothing. I think the orchestra members took a big financial hit in the process of bringing this orchestra back to life. They Am I took right? an enormous hit. Mm. One of the, we'll get to that. One of the things I love about working with this organization is working with the musicians themselves who are so ferociously focused on what they do. And I think part of the one of the reasons that they're such a pleasure to work with for our visiting conductors who come in, um, and they really are, they're a sought after orchestra at this point for major conductors who love to come here. Eh, you got your palm trees and your coconuts, but you've got this fabulous orchestra who work together as a team as only a, a group of people who have been through the equivalent of combat can. Yes, I mean, they exactly. have been through exactly. it and they. Uh, there is a sense of camaraderie uh, about this group that is just extraordinary, but I digress. Let's, how did we get to the point where we are now, where we have an sure. orchestra? I believe there was significant restructuring, uh, reduced numbers of people in terms of support staff, maybe the size of the orchestra, but the performances are here and we can enjoy them. So how did we get from there to here? Okay, it wasn't restructuring. It was um, starting all over again. Huh. The Honolulu Symphony Society is dead. The orchestra is dead. Long live the orchestra. It's a completely different operation. It's the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra, a new 501c3, a new, a new everything. Because Which there means was it's, nothing it's, there. You can donate to it and get a tax. Oh my word, yes. yes. And right. I promise you we'll get to that. Yeah. I'll look okay. at it and watch. Yeah. We've got another. I got an eye on that. Yes. Three minutes to go. Um, but it, uh, it was brought into being deliberately by a couple of folks who were on the original board and uh, some of those folks came back. It was recognized at that point that if it were to be done, if we were going to have an orchestra again, it had to be done very quickly uh, because of this um, exodus of, of musicians. Absolutely. And when that, once that gets below a certain point, you can't rebuild. It no. just could never happen. And so uh, in the space of a little less than three years, uh, a new 501c3 was brought into being. The orchestra was reconstituted. Many, almost all of the musicians that were left were hired back. And uh, the first season was begun in, oh Lord, I should have this. I believe 2012. I think it was 2012. Because they took yeah. 2013 off. That's exactly right. And That's then 2014 exactly right. really began the new era, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's very fair to say. And there's been a, a, a season ever since. The, uh, the size of the orchestra has not really been reduced. Oh, okay, good. A great deal of the, um, uh, of the extra baggage, the nice offices, the very you know more uh, very right. adequate staff support staff and all that that's been reduced, but the actual the machinery that produces the actual product has not been reduced. It's still a core orchestra of 63, mm. and uh, of course we ha we have a pool of other musicians that we hire for larger pieces than that. You know mm. the Bruckner we have coming up. You need many more than 63. You, there are orchestras where you require a lot of extra percussion. Oh and things my word, I know. Yes, yes. Uh, um, but that is according to what the Composer requires at that yeah, time. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you can't, um, you don't get any benefit from high tech with a with an orchestral <laughs> piece. You know, it's, if you need four trumpets, you're going to have four trumpets. You can't right. have two trumpets and a, an electric box. No, it doesn't work. Um, so the actual product has not suffered. In fact, um, I maintain this, and nobody's ever argued with me. They wouldn't dare that uh, <laughs> uh, the orchestra has never sounded better. I mean, I really I believe that. And if you've, uh, if you've uh, all through last season, I, 
my breath was taken away every time we had a Masterworks concert. Uh, they just sound sublime, and we opened this season a couple of weeks ago with a concert. We brought in the, arguably the world's best organist at this point, Cameron oh. Carpenter, uh, to play a couple of unusual, well, rarely heard pieces uh, for orchestra and organ, because that's a hard thing to do. Um, and we heard the uh, Poulenc uh, organ concerto and, of course, the symphony of uh, the organ symphony, Symphony Number no. Three by Saint Sans, mm. and uh, it was electrifying. I, I, I've gotten accustomed now to seeing audiences in Blaisdell a little more stunned than they were the concert Absolutely. before, and they were totally gobsmacked after this. Uh, I believe this that. performance. For those of you who don't know, gobsmacked <laughs> means that. Uh, I lived in Australia for a while, so. So, um, anyway, the product is just absolutely fabulous, and uh, uh, that interlude where the, museums, the musicians, as you say, went through a very, very difficult time, mm -hmm. hardened them somehow. Uh, it's become, uh, it's always been a joy for musicians to work with other talented musicians to produce the magic that only a symphony orchestra sure. can. But to add to that joy um, a sense of defiance of, you know, despite reality, by golly, we're going to do we're this thing. We're going to make it work. Because yeah. this is one of the finest things that civilization has to offer. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to be the only state in the Union without a symphony orchestra. I think that's important for people to realize that when we lost our orchestra, we were the only state <laughs> that didn't we have one, even though our orchestra had originally been one of the oldest in That's the exactly Union. That's exactly right. That's and exactly right. It's very upsetting that that happened, but m excitingly, we have our orchestra. Can you tell us something about um, some of the programs that maybe have been initiated with the new orchestra that are giving more access to the orchestra to? the common people and those people who don't eat have a lot of money for tickets or who wouldn't think that this is a priority let's tell them what they're missing but let's also tell them how you're making it easier well, for let's, them. let's do that it's um to the ex i don't play an instrument i know nothing about music i've been around classical music th accidentally through my association with public radio and i've learned to love it in fact it's gone beyond that i uh, i recognize great music now as being a part of the human experience that it's taken us thousands of years to get to. And it opens doors, it opens portals to ways of thinking and ways of feeling and ways of seeing and uh, experiencing the world that no other medium can. It's fantastic. Let's go to break and come back and pick this up. Absolutely. So that we can stay with continuity. I'd okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. We're going to take a short break and then we'll be back with Michael Titterton and talking about the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra and how you can get lower cost tickets and enjoy this incredible experience. Thank you. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. Go to hungeris.org to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. Aloha, I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahei every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Martha Randolph. The program is The Will of the People. Let there be music. My guest today is Michael Titterton, who is the president of the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra. And before we went to break, Michael, we were 
going to tell people about some of the new ways in which they can be a part of this orchestra, either participate or just come to the concerts. There was a $5 concert recently, which do we have that more than once a year, or is that just at the beginning of the season? And tell I people how that works. The taste of the, of the symphony taste is of what the you're symphony. referring to. Um, yeah, we did that. It, it was a $5 admission. And it was exactly that. It was a, a, a sort of smorgasbord of um, samples. samples of the pieces what we're going to hear throughout the season. Which is through, great. You just, just show up to the Blaisdell, you give them your yep. five bucks and you sit anywhere in the Blaisdell mm -hmm. and have what, about 30 minutes, 40 minutes worth of music, maybe even an oh, hour. It's longer than that. It's about an hour. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. An hour of orchestra for five bucks, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's, uh, you know, uh, and you can spontaneously do it after work, you know, grab your I, I'm, I'm sad to say that we don't do that on a weekly basis. Well, sad, uh, not really, because if we did, we'd be out of business again in no Absolutely. time. Um, but it's a, it's a way of experiencing the orchestra for the first time for a lot of people, and that's one of the things, that's, that's a real priority for me, is I know that the one thing we don't have to worry about with Hawaii Symphony Orchestra is the quality of the product. I mean, it is that's absolutely fabulous. The challenge is twofold. It's... Um, has to do with bringing people into the auditorium to experience what a symphony orchestra can do, Absolutely. usually for the very, very first time. And um, in the case of my own generation, for example, you know, I, I've always given uh, thanks for having my life, having followed the trajectory of rock and roll. I, it's been very satisfying for me. Music has developed in the popular sphere. Pretty much parallel with the development of my life, and I've always appreciated that. And had it not been for the accident of public radio, I wouldn't have found my way into classical music. And now we have classical music with rock. Yes, if I we remember do. correctly, there have been several concerts mm -hmm. where they have explored the music of well known rock groups, mm -hmm. and not to mention the Harry Potter film series, okay. one of my favorites. Those performances are so full because. The kids will watch the movie and suddenly they hear live music underneath the screen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is a way to introduce your kids to live music. It's not just the kids. No, there's um, a lot of adults. A lot of adults who, as I mentioned, um, have had a satisfying popular music life but and so have, haven't felt the need to explore beyond that. Um, but if I can get the boomers into the into the hall with their kids, ideally, right. um, with the nostalgia of, of gr gr you know some great rock, rock and roll, we've done Led Zeppelin, we've done Queen. Absolutely. With, uh, in a few weeks, we have um, Pink Floyd coming out, which is going to be quite fabulous. I, I have a few friends that are totally going to that. One. <laughs> and. Um, uh, what we do is we bring in a tribute band uh, that has experience working with classical, uh, with a symphony orchestra, and we're able to celebrate rock and roll with all the, you know, all the stuff, all the electronics that go with rock and roll, and, it, and the light show, is, you know, it's going to be a part of the Pink Floyd thing. Uh, but added to that is going to be the immense palette of sound that is possible with a symphony orchestra, which um, a lot of folks, a lot of rockers, have never experienced. and. Rock and roll can be magical. You add that, add to that the magic of a symphony orchestra, and it's truly mind blowing. You have to mm. go back Especially a few decades. Especially live. Most oh, people will listen to their records live. and they won't recognize that mm. there's orchestral music behind of course, yeah. the band. Mm -hmm. But when you see it and hear it at the same time, it is really it's dynamic because the sound yeah. comes up through your body, which mm -hmm. is an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely amazing, and it's working. We have people coming in for these concerts who then come back to hear the, uh, the, the, the classical uh, uh, concerts. And throughout the last season, it was ten to go by, audiences for everything have been growing and growing and growing. So we're, we're, on a, we're on a winning streak here. The same with, um, you mentioned Harry Potter. Yo, Harry Potter, guys, I have been bringing people in for the first time, children, uh -huh. because as you say, we must build up the audience for those that are going to be still living in the next 50 to 75 sure. years. Yeah. And they have gone bananas. They well, I, I would it. think so. It's been absolutely magic. It's the same thi you thing. You put on an extra show for the one coming up. We have up. added a third show for the one coming up. Because which the is The Prisoner of Azkaban, out. for those of you who don't know, which is the third movie. Guys, I saw the first two. Te your grandkids, your children will love you forever if you take them to this. And did you know me. we have contracted to do 
all of the Harry Potter films. All of the Harry Potter music. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And this is cool music, which when you hear it live, you get a greater sense of the beauty of the music which you take for granted when you watch the movie. And with The Prisoner of Azkaban coming up, uh, it's not just the orchestra, it's, it's a whole choir to go with this because uh, that's what they the score choral requires. Absolutely, wow. It is really going to be something. So is there a special deal for children? Or young people? There are all sorts of deals. If you if you call, uh, do we have the website on the screen? Perhaps we do. Yeah. Uh, Hawaii Symphony Orchestra right. .org. Uh, go to our website. Figure, and from there you can see all the different things we're doing: the Pink Floyd and the Harry Potter and and Which certainly is, the yeah. Masterwork series. And then um, you can look at you know how the seating works and, and and all that. But give our office a call. We are really anxious for you to come and see these concerts. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have discounts for veterans, we have discounts for teachers, we have discounts for children, of course we do. Uh, we will work with you any way yeah. we can. Because we know that once you, and especially your kids, have experienced um, uh, the magic that is a part of a, of a symphony concert, um, they will become addicted Absolutely. and you will not get a moment's rest and, until you bring them back again and again and again. I we think, see the yeah. magic that we see in our outreach when we take uh, and we do this throughout the season. We t uh, musicians um, are sent out uh, in ensembles to schools around, around the area. And I've been out on several of these trips and I've seen kids, um, second, third, fourth grade and beyond, who are being introduced not simply to classical music, because it's not really, you know, we don't push that down anybody's throat, but they're introduced to the idea of music being created for the first time. It does every, all music doesn't come out of an iPod. No. It, it, it is created by a human being along the line and uh, not always electronically. Uh, and we introduce groups of, of school children to the idea of how a clarinet works. And a clarinetist will explain how this instrument became their favorite, their first love and uh, why it is they've now dedicated their life to it. And you it's can fantastic. see the light bulbs popping all around the room, little heads going, uh, <gasps> wow. Two things I wanted to mention. Ladies and gentlemen, $15 is all it costs. If you have a young person who is in school, you let the orchestra box office know you have to show some kind of identification. They will put you in the system so you don't have to keep doing that. And on the Monday before a performance, you can go down and buy a ticket for your youngster exactly and right. for yourself, $15 each. You cannot beat that anywhere. Also, sir, there was one performance of Peter and the Wolf, the mm -hmm. classic music that introduced the instruments in the orchestra. It was done one time. I'm wondering if we're ever going to have one of those again, because that is a classical piece from Leonard Bernstein. I remember watching him on TV. And uh, is that something we can look forward to again I sometime? I expect so. Did, did I narrate that one? I, I don't I remember. Think perhaps I did. Um, I mean, I've done it with this orchestra. Yeah. And yeah, we love to do that sort of thing. We, as far as special programming for Keiki, boy, do we have something coming up. The uh, Symphony for the Birds, you know about this? Yeah, no, I don't know oh, about oh. it. I know what it is, but I don't know. We did this once last year. It was a very special thing that mushroomed. It was a great idea that turned into a fabulous idea. And essentially, it was. It started with some grant money where we were able to commission uh, the, the composition of original pieces, uh, several original pieces, each of which were dedicated and descriptive of a particular Hawaiian bird that was either going extinct or had become extinct. It was a sad sort of a thing to begin with, but then once those pieces were composed, um, some animated fi uh, films were brought into being that uh, depicted these very same birds. And this all was put into a, uh, a one-time concert. We actually did three of them last year um, for school children that were bussed in from all over. Uh, and uh, it was performed at the Blaisdell and was a magical experience for everyone concerned. We're doing that again. It's once again, it's on our website. Take a look at, you know, oh, yeah. hawaiisymphonyorchestra.org. And uh, that is going to be a fabulous experience. And we're going to be involving as many children as we can with that one as well. A it's lot of people don't know piece. you have been working with Hawaiian musicians. I went to a concert a short time ago where you had original compositions 
performed and composed by Hawaiian musicians mm -hmm. for the orchestra and, and concerti, someone playing with them. There was a chant, a chanter. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Is more of that planned? Oh, for absolutely. Future? And one of our great partners, of course, is the Hawaii Symphony for Youth. Honolulu Symphony for Youth, yeah. forgive me. Um, and uh, for the second time in a few weeks, we're going to be doing what we call a side-by-side -side concert, which is uh, we have our orchestra, and then with each of our musicians is uh, one of the performers from one of the orchestras of the, of the Symphony for Youth. And uh, we, it's a side-by-side -side show, literally, where our musicians will play, their musicians will play, and then we all play together. Or essentially, as two orchestras are blended, but it's a wonderful way to work with the up-and-coming musicians of tomorrow, who, you know, many of whom will be joining in the fullness of time the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, we have a short time left. I'd like to tell people about the financial status of the mm. orchestra, how they can help, besides buying <coughs> season tickets, and. If there's anything else you need or anything else that the public can do to continue to support its orchestra, even if they don't have extra cash. Absolutely. Number one, uh, we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we came into being in a very compressed period of time just because we didn't want to lose any more music musicians than we absolutely had to. So we began um, undercapitalized. Uh, and that's marked our existence in the uh, in the seven years now that we've been in existence, and um, we uh, we've been broke every year. This last year, we've begun to turn a corner. We're a little less broke now than we were at the beginning of that year, and uh, I'm very very pleased with that. We um, uh, have really detected a uh, a rise in in enthusiasm among the corporate sector and some of our donors. I mean, the standard math for a symphony orchestra is um, about a third of its revenue comes from ticket sales. The rest has to be brought in from somewhere, you know, major mm -hmm. donors or, or whatever. And we're currently running about 45% is coming in from ticket sales. That's uh, excellent. It's very good, um, but it, we are running on a really bare bones budget. It's, it's half of what it was, was with yeah. the old orchestra 10 years ago. Uh, it cannot be cut any further and still be called a symphony orchestra. So that is one thing. I mean, we, obviously, we've always got a need for cash. Um, as far as ticket buying is concerned, that's why I'm so... Uh, enthusiastic for people to have our web page on their browser or whatever it is um, because we just don't have the money to do massive advertising we're doing fabulous things that's where all the resources go um, but uh, you, you have to take some of the uh, responsibility right now for finding out what it is that we're doing as far, now third as far as helping us out as a volunteer, which uh, a lot of people want to do. Yes, please, we need all the help we can get. We have two ways of, uh, uh, you can do that. One is we have the Honolulu, uh, the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra Associates, which is a group that's been in existence for many years uh, and is a real vital force. They, they stage fundraisers for us, they uh, organize parties backstage, they uh, help us out during show nights themselves. Fabulous group of people. It's an organization unto itself. It's a separate organization to the symphony orchestra. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a club and it's uh, like a 30 or $40 right. dollar, um, a year uh, fee for that just for the administration mm. of the club. But it's, uh, it's a real yeah. important organization as far as the symphony is concerned. Alternatively, give us a call or send us an email at our website uh, because we can always use volunteers in the office. We have an absolute skeleton crew right now and uh, we can always use volunteers. I'm a volunteer. It's, uh, um, I mean, it's, it's the way it operates. We have a few dedicated professionals. We just took, took on a new development director, uh, Shona Guterres, and uh, we have uh, an excellent marketing manager, and of course, Jonathan Parrish is the executive director. But uh, more and more and more, we're using volunteer help to turn this back into a, prof which it is a professional producing organization. We've just got to um, uh, make the whole enterprise yeah. a little more stable. Well, one of the fortunate things is in Hawaii, we've become used to being volunteers to mm -hmm. get something which maybe in other states they have more funding for. So your volunteers here are less scattered and less likely to default on you when they make a commitment 
they consider it a commitment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I encourage all of you to do this. Volunteer for the orchestra. Volunteer for the opera. Offer people your time and energy. You'll probably get a ticket out of it, which that's sort of a good payment. And you will be doing something that will change your community, you directly. And uh, we need all sorts of help. It's, uh, uh, I mean, we have people to play the instruments, so we, we're covered there. But uh, in order to increase the, uh, uh, the attractiveness of um, the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra to major donors, which is uh, increasingly a, a, a challenge for us, um, we can do that. We can do that by putting on terrific events that they can come and, uh, you know, you can come and meet the artists and, right. and have a drink backstage and all that. We need support help for that. We need party people. What I, my mission with Hawaii Public Radio, <laughs> with the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra, is to make it not boring, to make it fun. I want to knock out all the stereotypes of, of uh, 19th century, you know, sobriety and powdered wigs and all the rest of right. it. That's not what we're about. We're about great music and the kind of uh, transcendence that, that can come to an individual it's through fantastic. participating in great music yes. and, uh, and having a good time. You know, I, li I like parties. I like parties and it's a great <laughs> party at the orchestra. Michael, I want to thank you. We're out of time. But ladies and gentlemen, please do what you can to help your cultural life in Hawaii continue. The orchestra, the opera, anywhere you know. Give your time, give your energy, and give a few dollars. It can't hurt. And check with them. Maybe they have a deal going on. So this has been the will of the people. Let there be music. And I say, indeed, let there be music. Please join me in two weeks. I look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you, Michael. Martha, thank you.